I've just asked top garden designer and BBC Gardener's World presenter Adam Frost on how you should redesign your garden. I met him at the Painters Forstall Gardening Club and we repaired to the hall's tiny little catering kitchen and had a quick 15 minute chat on how you should redesign your garden. Well, firstly, he says, don't do anything. You know, if you've moved into a new house, don't do anything to the garden. Go out into the garden every morning, every evening and just walk the space and really think about what you want from it. He himself has really quite recently moved into a new garden and he says that's what he's done. You need to think about where does the sun come up, where does it go down, where are you most attracted to sitting? Is there any part of the garden that you actually don't really want to be in and why might that be? Are you trying to protect yourself from an overlooking window or maybe there are noisy neighbours? We can't get rid of noise completely, but there are things you can do that will make it much easier. Adam really advises taking a whole growing season, which is, you know, pretty much a year, before you do anything and see what grows in the garden, see what grows well. And he most specifically says is don't have prejudices. Don't think, oh, I hate conifers or I hate acupa or I hate this or I hate that. And I mean, I completely understand this because when we first came to this garden, we uh, were determined to get rid of a great big conifer, which is really planted quite close to the back door. I mean, thank goodness we didn't because we lived with it for a while and we realised that it was screening out the light from a really ugly street lamp. Now, if we'd taken that conifer down, it would have been unbearable to be on our terrace at night. So really think, not just I hate conifers, but what's this tree doing here? What does it bring to the garden? What does it bring to the party? Now, we've all heard about towns and villages having microclimates, but every garden has a microclimate, Adam says. My Viburnum opulus is only just changing colour, but my neighbour, who also has a Viburnum opulus, which is probably just about 100 feet away or something, and is facing in the same direction, has already lost all its leaves. Now, this is probably because my neighbour's Viburnum opulus is against a wall, and that'll make it much warmer. It's probably growing faster. And actually, I've noticed it also comes out a little bit earlier in the spring. Mine is a good three weeks behind it and mine's in rather a shady spot. So what about garden privacy? Well, Adam suggests you create a secluded corner. If you've got a window overlooking you, don't stick a row of trees down by your garden border. It, they'll take years before they really screen anything. You can put something much smaller really close to where you're going to sit. Having trees close to the house can create a secluded private effect. And if it's noise you're worried about, try a water feature with a gentle sparkling sound of water trickling over. As I say, you can't ever get rid of noise, but you can distract yourself. Adam says that good gardens have the right amount of layers. He thinks a good garden, a good English garden, reflects an English woodland. And a woodland naturally, he says, has four layers. At the top, you'll have your mature trees, your oaks and your beeches. And then underneath those, there are the saplings, the younger trees. And then in woodland, you'll see the equivalent of shrubs. It'll be like rhododendrons or hawthorn or quite large plants which grow sideways to make the most of the light. And then lower down, you've got the ferns and the brackens, which he equates to a herbaceous border. And finally, you get the lowest level, the snowdrops, the bluebells, the anemones. And this is your bulb layer. And I can see what he means. And it's quite a good idea to assess your garden, thinking, are all those layers here? So looking around my garden, I've certainly got the larger trees. And I do remember someone saying, oh, I'm so glad you've left the larger trees there because it makes the garden have better proportions. And I think that's what she was talking about. I think it's possible that maybe... I haven't got quite enough in the sort of saplings, smaller trees, larger shrubs area. I'm not sure about that. Now, one tip that I thought was incredibly useful is that Adam suggests that if you've got a gap in your border, think about the foliage, not about the flower colour. Think about the leaf shape and put a plant with a different leaf form in that gap. Now, that's a really interesting way of filling a gap in a border. Adam Frost really believes in planting for wildlife as well. We've lost so many of our wildflower meadows in the last 10 years, he says.
So if you're planning a garden redesign, then design in the wildlife because our gardens can help fill that gap. There's a number of videos that I've made about gardening for wildlife and there's more about this in the information in the description below. Adam also suggests that you think about a word that sums up your garden. So when you're in the garden centre or the nursery and you're going to buy new plants or new furniture or something, you think, does it fit with this word? So if your word that you use to explain your garden is calm or if it's romantic or if it's colourful, then look at what you were thinking of buying and say, well, if it's not calm, it's not coming home. If it's not romantic, it's not coming home. And finally, I think the best advice of all that he gave was to say, don't chase the dream that it's got to be perfect all the time. Enjoy those little moments that your garden can give you. Find your own way and don't worry about what anyone else thinks. Adam Frost is a very inspiring speaker and he's also very practical. He became a garden designer after he'd been a landscaper, so he really understands how the hard landscaping of a garden works. You can find out more about his garden design in the links in the description below. And he's also got a fantastic garden school that he's just opened and is available for talks. And do join us on the Middle Size Garden every Saturday if you haven't subscribed. We'd love to see you. Thank you.